Citridiomycota, commonly known as citrads, derived from the Greek word citridion, meaning little pot, describes the structures containing unreleased zoospores. They are the oldest fungal lineage, having fossils dating back to 350 million years ago, and are mainly aquatic, but can live in a diverse array of habitats. Most chytrids live in freshwater environments. Habitats such as ponds, lakes, and streams serve as a great place for feeding on pollen and other organic debris. Recently, there has been a rise in marine chytrid life when a large amount of pollen drifted into the Bay of Fundy in 2006. Outside of aquatic environments, chytrids can inhabit a variety of terrestrial environments. These environments can range from the frigid soils of Antarctica to the tropical sediments of the rainforest. Aside from being decomposers in soil, some are considered parasites in hosts like amphibians and certain plants. They are also able to form symbiotic relationships with certain herbivores in order to help with the breakdown of cellulose. However, even though not all chytrids are harmful, they can cause amphibians to suffer from deadly diseases. Hello! Today we are going to be covering Chytridiomycota's reproductive cycles. Chytrids are unique because they are the only fungi with flagellated spores. They are also interesting due to the fact they can reproduce sexually and asexually. We are going to start with some definitions and then take a look at the reproductive cycles. Spores are small reproductive cells notably capable of reproduction without sexual fusion. Zoospores are motile spores capable of movement with a flagellum. Motility is the ability to self-move. Sporangiums are enclosures where spores are formed. Zoosporangium are chytrid sporangiums. To germinate is when spores begin to grow and develop. Now let's take a look at the reproductive cycles. We are going to begin on the asexual reproductive cycle because it is a little less complicated and will help illustrate some of the basic mechanics of chytrid reproduction. We are going to start with a developing chytrid. As the chytrid matures, it develops a zoosporangium. Zoospores are created inside the zoosporangium through mitosis and are diploid spores. When the zoospores are ready to be released, they exit through an opening in the zoosporangium. The zoospores are motile and able to seek out a suitable habitat. Their motility is dependent on their flagellum. If the zoospore finds a suitable habitat, it begins to germinate and develop into a diploid chytrid. Now let's take a look at sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction depends on two alternating life stages. Alternating generations will go through a sporophyte and a gametophyte phase. The sporophyte phase is the diploid phase. The gametophyte phase is the haploid phase. Once again, we start with a developing chytrid in the sporophyte phase. As it matures, it develops a zoosporangium. However, the spores created in the zoosporangium are created through meiosis and thus are haploid. These haploid zoospores are released and when they germinate, they enter the gametophyte phase. As the chytrid in the gametophyte phase matures, it creates gametotangia, or singular 
gametes tangium. The gametes tangia contain male or female gametes. The gametes are released through an opening in the gametes tangia. Male and female gametes fuse to form a motile zygote. The zygote searches for a suitable habitat and begins to germinate, once again entering the sporophyte phase, thus completing the sexual reproductive cycle. The chytrid in the sporophyte phase may then reproduce asexually or once again start the sexual reproductive cycle. But Trachochytrium dendrobotitis causes a fungal infection known as citridiomycosis. Over the last 30 years, it has been thought to cause a drastic decline in populations and in severe cases, extinction. More than 200 species of frogs and over 350 species of amphibians are thought to be affected by citridiomycosis. These heterotrophs mainly consume pollen found in freshwater ecosystems. They can be considered decomposers as they feed off of decaying organisms. Other types of citrids often live inside other organisms, feeding parasitically within hosts such as plants, amphibians, and invertebrates. Because they are fungi, they release digestive enzymes that break down food, making it easier for them to absorb the needed nutrients.